Concordia University is pleased to have as its 2018 commencement speaker the Honorable Mary Palente. Mary Palente is a wife, mother, a former judge, a sister, a daughter, a friend, and a lifelong Minnesotan. She is a lawyer by training, but a peacemaker by nature. Currently, she works as a mediator, helping people settle lawsuits and resolve conflict in ways that are effective, peaceful, and constructive. Mary Palenti was also Minnesota's first lady for eight years, during which time she was focused on and committed to Minnesota's military families. Family Care Initiative, an internet-based program that allowed community organizations to volunteer their time and service to help families of deployed service men and women. Through the Minnesota National Guard's Yellow Ribbon Program, her initiative continues as a nationally recognized model for web-based community support for military families. Mary has asked us to watch the following video, after which I hope you'll help me in welcoming Mary Palente. Please direct your attention to the screens. We all want to help one another. Human beings are like that. More than machinery, we need humanity. More than cleverness, we need kindness and gentleness. Without these qualities, life will be violent and all will be lost. Are we there to be that love, that thoughtfulness, that kindness? Uh, I think of love as something strong and that uh, organizes itself and powerful. Love is the only basis for human relationships that respect in one another. In the midst of death, life persists. In the midst of untruth, truth persists. In the midst of darkness, light persists. You have a limited time to stay on Earth. You must try and use that period for the purpose of transforming your country into what you desire it to be. I think it is in the human spirit to argue, to quarrel, but it's also in the human spirit to remember a giving hand. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you so much. I'm going to ask that we bow our heads in prayer. Tonight, we're gathered here in a time-honored tradition to offer our congratulations and celebrate your accomplishment on a job well done. But in moments like these, we also pause to reflect on our journeys so far, the road ahead, and what at core gives life its purpose. I have three suggestions for you tonight, but first and most importantly, I'd like to say this. For all the countless ways in which your college degree will serve you well, and it will, its highest and best use will be on any path you forge that is foundationally built on and thoughtfully guided by love. The video we just watched was created by Lucas Baiano, a talented filmmaker whose work does a beautiful job of demonstrating the depth and breadth and extraordinary range of ways in which all of us can put love into action. Love is the cornerstone of all our good choices. Love is why you'll continue to nurture the friendships you've made during college. 
Love is why you will always choose to be kind. It's why you will always think first before you speak or post anything on social media. It's why you will always remember to call or text your mother and why you will always choose to use your good manners. Love is the reason you'll aim for the greater good and always do what's best, even when it's far beyond your own individual circumstances. Love is at the core of how we all show respect, gentleness, and kindness to everyone, every day. And this I know for certain. Love will see you through the toughest choices you may ever have to make. Right now, you may be focused on job or career, but soon you'll be thinking about things like whom you will marry, whether to have a family, how to deal with health challenges, or countless other complicated twists and turns along the road. Love exists in the balance of grace and truth. Love is both. The Bible describes Christ exactly this way, full of grace and truth. The book of John says, for the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. You may be tempted throughout your life to sacrifice one for the other, and maybe without even stopping to think about it. For example, when someone is full of truth only, that can be cruel. You'll know exactly what I mean if you don't already. The first time you have a really mean boss at work who calls you out, and maybe even deservedly so, but without an ounce of grace. You'll know it when you're on the receiving end. When truth is not tempered by grace, it can tear people down and leave scars. So for your part, remember to always temper truth with grace. And on the flip side, when we're full of grace only and no truth, we can find ourselves nodding politely not speaking up when we know we should, and failing to be direct because speaking truth in some circumstances is just too uncomfortable. That's not love either. Grace and truth, and it's a daily challenge, balancing and choosing both. So first and always love, because love is what gives life its purpose. But I have two more suggestions for you as you begin your life after college journey. And here is my second. Always be you, fully and completely and authentically you. It can be hard to know yourself well in your early 20s. Understanding who you are and then making choices that are right for you can be a challenge. Sometimes it's simply a matter of rethinking or recalibrating but sometimes it may be that knowing yourself will send you in a completely different direction. Many of you already know your career path or have that first job, but many of you have no idea what's next, no real sense of what the future holds, which at this moment is okay. But my suggestion to you is to do your best to learn who you are and embrace it. It will help you make choices that resonate for you based on your own unique gifts, talents, aptitudes, and tendencies. A very long time ago, I graduated from college with a Bachelor of Arts degree in political science, and to this day, I have no specific memory of why I chose that as a major. I actually preferred medicine and was intrigued by the idea of becoming a doctor or something in the area of healing arts, but I went a different direction. After I chose my major, I thought, what does a person actually do with a degree in political science? And a friend of mine at the time said, well, law school, of course. Oh, of course. <laughs> so off I went, just like that, to the University of Minnesota Law School. And when I graduated law school, I began my career with a firm in Houston, Texas, and I expected a accepted a job offer in their litigation department. How exciting, I thought, litigation, battling it out in court. This is going to be terrific. So for many years of my life, which included working my way up to partner at a law firm here in the Twin Cities, I was steeped in conflict because that's what litigators do. They fight and scrap and 
argue and revel in conflict every day of their lives. But there was just one tiny problem with that. I don't actually like conflict. Maybe that's the kind of thing I should have figured out when I was in my 20s. But it's okay because the good news is I recalibrated in my 30s. And all the previous years spent as a litigator taught me a lot, including how courtrooms operate and how to manage conflict. And that led eventually to my leaving the practice of law and becoming a judge, a far better fit for me. I love my work as a judge and now as a mediator, and both these roles have been completely and utterly me. There is immense happiness for me in refereeing other people's conflict, or even better yet, in peacemaking. And for me, there's something beautiful about watching the cloud lift when a case settles, or seeing the relief on people's faces when they know their conflict is over. So in the end, it worked out for me, and it will for you too. But you will be much happier and more effective if you're tuned into what works for you you will only be your best self when, in fact, you are being your most authentic self. Be completely you. And one third and final piece of advice, and one that is far more practical, make your bed every day. I initially read about the broader value of the make your bed habit a few years ago in an article that appeared in Reader's Digest, the source of all great knowledge. And by the way, a little digression here, another tip. Consider subscribing to Reader's Digest. In this age, saturated with technology and our eyes focused on screens for far too many hours every day, Reader's Digest is a tiny magazine, but a great way to learn about a wide variety of subjects. And it will help you continue to be a lifelong learner. My mother actually bought me a subscription like a gajillion years ago, and I have always enjoyed it, and you just might too. So that's my digression, but back to bed making. So the habit, as simple as it is, is very important. And our lives are really a collection of our everyday habits. This particular habit has been studied, and it's one of the most impactful new habits you can form. And consider that graduation from college is a terrific time to form a new habit. The habit of bed making actually has a cascading effect. It's the kind of habit that actually leads to the creation of other good habits and decisions. It takes about two minutes, but those two minutes will give you a sense of organization, which will impact your productivity, which in turn will impact your mood. If you're skeptical, I would encourage you to Google the question, why should I make my bed? Or ask Siri or Alexa, because that will give you the same answer. After I read this article I'm speaking about in Reader's Digest, I actually made two very old-fashioned photocopies of the article and provided them to my two daughters, one of whom graduated from college three years ago and one of whom is graduating a week from tonight. And as between the two of them and my bed-making tip, I am only batting 500. So I am an optimistic kind of gal, and I am at least hoping that 50% of you will take me up on this bed-making tip and give it a try. And of course, the suggestion is not just about making your bed. It's about learning early the importance of being intentional about your everyday habits. However small they may seem, they add up. And collectively, they'll make an enormous difference in your life. So, those are my suggestions, and I do hope the next chapter of your journey is filled with every success. I am confident that if you choose to use your education, skills, and achievement to love everyone in your path in whatever way you can, to always remain fully and completely and authentically you, and develop good habits and make good decisions every day, however big or small, including making your bed, then today will mark not only the day that you graduated from college, but the day you successfully began the next chapter of your journey along the road of your one and only life, built on and always guided by love.
congratulations.